supporters can destroy you and psycho fans will definitely destroy you and it's the people i see around the president today are psycho fans and something that has come out with kimani shungwa he gets annoyed with everybody with everything and any time he should relax he's adding more pressure in his system he should know that we've seen people come and go and he's likely to go sooner than later but around president ruto is a robust uh, council of economic advisors those are paper tigers these are university dons who do not have the basic understanding of economics What a privilege, what an honor to have you on Richard Mwenja Exclusive. My name is Richard Mwenja, the host of the show, and it is such a distinct privilege to have your company with us. We don't take it for granted. Today, we advance the conversations shaping Kenya's political landscape, a raft of them. But first things first, allow me to introduce the gentleman who will help me bring this conversation home. And as, as I've said before, he is the perfect person to have on this conversation because he has seen it all, literally. He has been appointed into office as a state officer, fired from the very same offices, elected into office, voted out of office by the electorate, and today he sits across this table as a renowned public scholar and governance analyst, the son of Chirangani constituency, Kipruto Arab Kiro. It's my pleasure, Richard, uh -huh. as always. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why you call me a gentleman. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm as gentle as I should. The writing is on the wall. People say you emulate in former president, uh, the late uh, Moi Kibaki. Well, I, I drew a lot of inspiration from his character. Mm -hmm. He was never in a hurry. And I think many things are solved by time. Mm -hmm. At times when you want to solve everything, mm -hmm. you end up messing even some things we can be done better by other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before we head on straight to our first conversation for the day, a rather subject, let me understand this. Many consider you to have envied the, 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 the academic success of Kapsaret Member of Parliament, Oscar Sudi, but now the courts of Kenya have uh, withdrawn those charges against him for, I mean, and saying he's, he actually has the academic papers that many were taking concern with. Do you, do you feel that uh, Sudi's vindication has put you at a, a very ugly spot? <laughs> well, I wish. I wish they had actually said those academic papers are genuine. Mm -hmm. uh, what they said, and uh, I have not read the, the, full, uh, uh -huh. the, 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 the full ruling uh -huh. or deliberations, but what he said is that uh, it has failed on technicalities. Mm -hmm. Perhaps technicality is the way it was prosecuted. And at times technicality can be attributed to some events outside the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And those events I do not know because uh, I have, I have no, uh, no capacity mm -hmm. to question an integrity of a court of law. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm as suspicious as anybody else. Because the narrative that we have outside here, he joined uh, Kim to do uh, procurement. And his name was that of a lady. When you compare the admission number and uh, whose admission number was, mm -hmm. it belonged to a, a young law lady. Not concurrent. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, a young law yeah, lady think, uh -huh. uh, who was doing procurement, what they call supply chain management. Uh, he graduated ostensibly as somebody called Kimutai, doing a diploma in business management. So that discrepancy tells you a lot. And uh, there is also lacuna as to when did he go to secondary school? And which secondary school is this? Who are his classmates? And uh, because what I know is that at least they saw him in primary school mm -hmm. uh, before he started selling charcoal uh -huh. and, and, and chicken. Mm -hmm. But as to whether he went to a secondary school, I doubt. Uh -huh. But uh, nonetheless, I cannot be envious of him because from all my schools are my classmates, those who are still alive. And the most recent ones at the university, mm -hmm. many of them are people that you can, and even my lecturers are there. So we want to know Sudi's secondary school teacher and uh, who taught him at Kenya Institute of Management. Uh -huh. Was it the Nairobi branch or 
Eldoret branch. On that issue, I spoke yeah. to, our, to our member of parliament from Wasengishu County the other day, and he said maybe Kipruto Rapkiro is a part of those old guards who are, are victims of negative generational gap. Perhaps why maybe you people are envying young legislators who are sort of having microwave success or, st or meteoric rise in the political scene. Is that, is, is that the case? Well, I, I think that member of parliament does not know me. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy when a younger person succeeds mm -hmm. because I strongly believe young people is the future of Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, it is the foundation that is being laid presently mm -hmm. for the betterment of this country. Mm -hmm. But you cannot tell me people whose wealth cannot be attributed to any hard work and whose academic credentials are questionable because they have no classmates are people I can get envious of. Mm -hmm. Even my children, those who have not been able to make it to a certain level, whether first degree, masters or whichever, I respect them the way they are. You embrace them as they are? Are there, but I don't want them to steal certificate because that is fraud. Not only fraud, it is immoral because you are telling somebody you have a diploma mm -hmm. when somebody else is struggling to get certificate. Mm -hmm. It is something that is creating the double standards that we have as a society today. Uh -huh. It is lowering the moral bar uh -huh. of our nation. Rightly put, to our first front uh, for the day, active citizen uh, and activist Jero Teach Sei, I know she's a lady you hold in high regard, uh, has come forth and perhaps warned President William Ruto that if he is not careful, he runs the risk of been a victim of what has befell others who are used to having a present worship team around them. People are, who cannot call the king when he's naked and tell him you need to really check on your ways or fix some messes here and there. Would you say that maybe there's an iota of truth in, 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 in the concerns of Jerotich say? Well, I would not call it iota of uh, truth. Mm -hmm. I would say a lot of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it in the sense that leaders have fallen because of their own supporters, not because of their own opponents. In fact, our critics tell us which side of our face is darker. And we are able to change either by improving it with certain lotions or by facing the sun with the other side to make both of them the same. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, supporters can destroy you. And psychophants will definitely destroy you. And it's the people I see around the president today are psychophants. I dealt with them for two years. And part of the reason why I bolted, I realized that there is no leadership here. Leadership is not campaigning and winning the position. Leadership is the ability to accept the opinion of others, even when it is at variance with your own opinion, mm -hmm. as long as it makes logical sense. Uh -huh. But you've credited, credited President William Ruto as an independent thinker. How comes then again you're taking concern with him that maybe he cannot distinguish the line between psychophancy and people who are generally around me? You know, if you are an independent thinker and you have huge massage, huge ego that needs constant massage, you run the risk of sleeping during the massage. That is the problem our president has. Really? Yeah. He has huge ego. He's intelligent. I don't doubt him. Uh, he's, he's, he's shrewd. I don't doubt him. He's focused. I don't doubt him. And also, he can capture areas where he knows his interest is not uh, taken care of. But this thing called ego, if you have a huge one and you have very good masseurs, by the time they go through the first phase, you'll be asleep and you will not know when the rain started beating you. Mm -hmm. It's the, the danger of, that he has. On the issue of psychophancy, as a seasoned politician, and uh, the names I'm going to mention, mo most of them are your friends, why are people quick, a huge section of the political class quick, to narrow down Senator Samson Cherargay and lead of government of business, government business in National Assembly, Kimani Shungwa, as psychophants, people are singing present worship uh, to President William Ruto. Why are people narrowing down particularly on these two gentlemen? Is from the statements they make. Uh, definitely, I know uh, Kimani Shungwa better than Cherargay. Mm -hmm. Cherargay, I met him once, you know, mm -hmm. once possibly in, uh, in the studio, but I don't know him as much. But Shungwa, I know him. Mm -hmm. He's a very intelligent Kenyan. Mm -hmm. 
but the level of intelligence has been brought down by the desire to, to, uh, to, to praise the president. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've told you there are certain ingredients that are lacking in making somebody intelligent. Mm -hmm. When you are either annoyed, you are jealous, or you are greedy, those three ingredients bring your brain mm -hmm. perform at lower level than it should have been. Uh -huh. And something that has come out with Kimani Shungwa, he gets annoyed with everybody, with everything, and any time. He should relax. He's adding more pressure in his system. He should know that we've seen people come and go. And he's likely to go sooner than later. That's my worry. He's a very nice Kenyan. I know him personally. He's a very nice Kenyan, but psychophancy has taken his brain away. The fact that Bifel Kariuki Chotara Mulu Mutwisi will come the way of Kimani Shungwa? The beauty is that those who are old men, who are wise, mm -hmm. but they have not been exposed to the, 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 the ways of letters. Mm -hmm. This is a well-schooled fellow. He went through Alliance High School, University of Nairobi, and he's somebody with full credentials. But now those credentials are throwing them away. The people in Kiambu, if you went there today and spoke the language he speaks, they will chase you. That's my worry. They will hit you? Oh, yeah. They will chase you. In fact, in Dindi Nyoro, is doing slightly better, I think, in his constituency. Mm -hmm. He has a way of communicating with them. But Kimani Ishungwa here in Kiambu, tell me how many public rallies has he held, apart from miserable church functions? Miserable? Miserable in the sense that if you organize an audience that came to church not to listen to you, they came to listen to the word of God and you use it as your audience for the cameras, mm -hmm. it tells you there is something. Can we go to Tenganga or Indeya or uh, Mushada or Kwamangi or go to Kidunguri, who could you send Peter the rock and address the people? He should tell us. He says he's the leader of majority, uh -huh. majority of whom they bought them. Majority of those MPs, they were bought from other parties. To close the conversation on matters to do with political psychophancy, Nyeri Governor Mutai Kahiga has come forth and slammed President Ruto's finance bill of 2024, terminate as um, predatory, and uh, he has actually urged members of parliament to vote against the bill. <coughs> Looking at how the scenario played out in the run-up to the finance bill 2023, and now the finance bill 2024 is here with us, do you think... Looking at the political climate, our MPs are likely to turn from the biblical soul into biblical poll and best advance the interest of the taxpayers. Unless President Ruto has taken time to listen mm -hmm. to all the views of Kenyans mm -hmm. and will make up those amendments before they present the final report. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the report that is going, to be pre is going to be presented by the committee is what will be adopted by the, by the current parliament. My worry is that some of the things that is going to do to us is that our economy is going to shrink. Shrink in the sense that it is cheaper today to import semen from Egypt than to manufacture in Kenya. With the passage of this finance bill, semen will move to 1,100 1, shillings per bag of 50 kilograms of semen. That's a hit to the manufacturing sector. Yes, definitely, because now we are not doing well. I'm told now the manufacturing sector is doing 7% of the GDP. Single digit? Single digit. When it was our time, we were oscillating between 17 and 22. Just go back to the history or ask Dr. Mugisa Kitui. He will tell you that. The industry was doing very well during our time. Now, importing the same bag of cement from Egypt and transporting it to Kenya because it's under commercial arrangements, you will sell it for 350 shillings a bag or 50 kilos. So what are you doing to Kenya? You are killing the industry. You are killing the goose that lays the golden egg. So then what's going to come out of uh, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda if this is the scenario playing out what you've just said? The bottom-up was dead on arrival. Nobody ever visualized how do you take this person from the bottom. Because you see, the pyramid, the economic pyramid that you know, you, as you take me from the bottom, you must also prepare the layer above me to, 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 to give me room by going a layer above. So the thing was not properly synchronized from the bottom to the apex, which is about self-actualization, where you buy 
the most luxurious items for you to show that you are different from us. What now Sudi is buying? Is he doing really celebrity actualization? Has he gone through the basics, including the basic, the basic thinking and philosophizing the environment that you live in and identifying your weakness so that you see how do you impact with the environment? He's still thinking about laggies. He's still about material things which are basic for the world. But around President Ruto is a robust uh, council of economic advisors. Those are paper tigers. These are university dons who do not have the basic understanding of economics. If you listen to President Kibaki debate in parliament when he was leader of op official opposition or was a member of parliament and also a minister, you would see somebody who is able to dissect economics. These are people who give us models that never work and they have not worked anywhere, anywhere else. They want us to experiment with our own country. David Dick could be watching, aren't you afraid of that? No, I'm not afraid. I will tell him which ministry has he run successfully. When I ran my ministry, it was number one in the entire government system. I was recalled from Bamako, Mali, that the president wants to see you tomorrow, only to realize it was about gifting us with, uh, with, uh, with shields mm -hmm. and the presents mm -hmm. for having performed as the best ministry in the first performance contracting Adam Zekibaki. David Ndi, which ministry has he run? Which, which economic model can he tell us works in Kenya? When, when did the IMF and World Bank make a success in any country in Africa? When, what they do, for every one dollar they bring in, they take away seven dollars. Let somebody challenge me. For every one dollar they bring in, they take away seven dollars. This so-called uh, expressway to Mombasa, costing 470 billion. U.S. bag of goodies to Kenya. No, that money will go back to U.S. Who are the technical people who are going to do the job? Where are the materials and everything going to be? Are they going to be sourced in Kenya? Is that part of the agreement? The technical people, maintenance, the spares. Who are going to, to, to provide that? And who is going to pay? It is you and I, when you go to Mombasa because you want it convenient, you pay 5,000. That 5,000 goes to U.S. Perhaps 1,000 remains to maintain the road. 4,000 goes to U.S. for every travel that you do. And I know you'll be doing so many of them because you are about to buy the car that I was told. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. Well, uh, second last front in our day's conversation. Uh, the other day, leader of opposition Ray Lodinga received the submissions of Limuru 3 meeting. And uh, among many other issues, he publicly endorsed the revenue sharing formula that, that, that of one man, one vote, one shilling. Looking at, how, uh, looking at that statement coming from Ray Lodinga, do you think that endorsement could compromise something in his current political bid and maybe his future political bids in the... Well, I think his campaign is what they call in French, fait accompli. Mm -hmm. The campaign, whether we are going to fail, will not be in the altar of Raila's misfortunes. It will be Kenya that has failed Raila. That is something that people should know. Mm -hmm. And the Kenya is not necessarily campaigning for Raila. Mm -hmm. Raila is a candidate that was identified by some of former heads of state. And they realize the best way to deal with the Kenyan situation is to allow Raila to play a greater role than this competitive politics nationally. And it's something that I approve of. But it doesn't tie Raila to AU. Should Kenyans say we need Raila back, he can resign that position, run, and win. And I have enough examples. I've told you of Abdullah Wade, Senegal. who did, of Senegal. Mm -hmm who did a lot of elections and he failed about five times. When he did the next time, he won and he stayed for two terms. But now, as bad man as would say, he wanted again to overstay invitation instead of doing only two terms. But he's still alive, he was about 98 years old. Mm -hmm. And he endorsed the, the, the president uh, that uh, uh, fire the other day. He was one of the people who endorsed the president. Mm -hmm. What am I trying to say? Let us not make Raila a subject of this issue. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to the one man, one shilling, one vote. Mm -hmm. 
personally, population should be a factor, but should not be an exclusive factor. Mm -hmm. There are about four parameters. I consider population as a factor. Then it must be given certain amount of weighting. Yeah, you weigh yeah, sure. certain amount of weighting, whether it is 40% or 50%. Then the balance of the weighting can also go to issues of land mass. Given the fact that the biggest county in Kenya today is Turkana County and is perhaps one of the poorest because the British never spend their resources there. And the smallest county is Mombasa County with a population almost 10 times the population of Turkana. Now, there is also the issue, apart from landmass and population, there is the issue of poverty index. Two counties may share certain parameters, but one is poorer than the other. For example, Keio Marakwet, while it's smaller in terms of population than Transoya, Transoya is poorer than Keio Marakwet. And therefore, if you are giving resources to Transoya, the poverty index should be a factor to be considered while distributing those resources. The other issue is the nature of infrastructure. While Mombasa is the smallest county, but the nature of infrastructure in Mombasa, because it is largely town, is that they will need a lot of money to do the roads within town, mm -hmm. to do drainage, social amenities, social amenities, including water reticulation. This therefore means you have to consider also that factor. And it doesn't need university graduate, a second year student from University of Nairobi, who has done basic economics and has done also a bit of computer mm -hmm. or, or, or whatever you call IT, mm -hmm. can do that so well and give us certain permutations. Then we check against the reality. How much is Kiambu getting today? Under that arrangement, how much will go to Kiambu? Mm -hmm. How much is Nandi? How much is Homa Bay? How much is Kuala? How much is uh, West Pokot? How much is Shola getting today? Otherwise, this issue has moved away from being sharing of resources. It is sharing of frustrations because people are making it political. And as, as I've told you before, the challenge is if you lift conflict about resources, to conflict about beliefs, then you lose the resource debate. Mm -hmm. And they are now lifting it above that so that it becomes another Kikuyu bashing. They are looking for that Kikuyu bashing so that the Kikuyus are told now you are going to be isolated. Today, if there's one man, one shilling, one vote, Transoya will benefit, Wasingishu will benefit, Nandi will benefit, Kericho will benefit. I'm telling you because that's the reality. That, and Kakamega will benefit. So it's not about Kikuyu. It's about the reality that we must provide the leadership. Mm -hmm. So what is lacking in this debate is leadership. Is leadership. I challenge them to give me. I will do it within five days. I will give them the template. And I tell them this is permutation one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Because these factors are known. We know poverty index. We know the population of Transoya, whether they are Kikuyus or Nandis. You know, the landmass. Landmass of Transoya. Mm -hmm. we, we know infrastructure, we, we, infrastructure in Transoya. It is, it is rural, urban. urban. Uh -huh. It is more rural than urban. Mm -hmm. So the kind of infrastructure is known. If you are doing a road from uh, one corner to the other, mm -hmm. you know the kind of road that you require mm -hmm. for you to transfer the goods and services into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, but you know, it has lost, the, it has lost its original meaning. Uh -huh. We are making it political mm -hmm. just because you want to put Kashaku at a corner and you say you are a tribal fellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, our bus has got to the bus station and that point takes us to the wrap of this conversation today on Richard Mwenja exclusive discussing a plethora of issues in the world of politics and governance. We do hope that you've tapped into the nuggets of wisdom on matters politics and governance from none other than former agriculture minister Kipruto Arab Kiro. We wait to see you on our next conversation. Do Advance this conversation beyond here at Richard Mwenja, at Mwenja Richard on X and on TikTok, at Kiro Official on X and on TikTok as well. Mheshmiwa, thank you for honoring my invitation.
it's my pleasure to. Uh -huh. Yeah, you've allowed me to vent on my frustrations. Uh -huh. Because I believe Kenyans, we are refusing to lead the people. Mm -hmm. We are confusing them. Mm -hmm. And because there is deficit of trust in Kenya, mm -hmm. we are fueling trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm worried. For you, it's all about I'm calling on the president uh -huh. and his deputy. Mm -hmm. Please lead this country mm -hmm. until you finish your term. Mm -hmm. You just want to leave a better country for your children and grandchildren. Yeah, because I'm worried. Uh -huh. my, children, my grandchildren will not go to school when they start fighting. They could end up How in will I separate? Some of my grandchildren are Nandi, some are Kikuyu, some are Luya. So how will I separate? <laughs> you know, how, how do you separate them? You don't want them to end up in the lion's den? No. No, they will not get there because Jesus is alive. Uh -huh. And he's, he's looking at us. Uh -huh. That these guys, uh -huh. God will give us an answer soon. Uh -huh. yeah. The I, fox won't bite them. Oh, no way. Well, no way. Just like Daniel. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it was Daniel. Yeah, he was thrown into the lion's den. Yes. Uh -huh. And there was also another one. Was it Abednego? Abednego. Yeah, I, I still remember. Uh, yeah. Well, your Sunday school teacher did a good job. Yeah. It was Mwalimu. Oh. Mwalimu at Kablamai Primary School. Uh -huh. Hudson Mulongo Mandela. He's still alive and kicking. He taught me history and English. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did you remember him when you were the minister? Did you visit I him often time? No, not often times, but we used to meet once in a while. And when he goes home, he's happy. Uh -huh. yeah. With some little sugar from you. I don't know. I can't remember. You know, it's a, I was a minister many years, many years ago. Uh -huh. Yes, I've forgotten. I hope you are generous to the people down there, the downtrodden. <laughs> to the extent of my capacity. All right. Yeah. Asante. Asante. Until next time, do enjoy the rest of your viewing.